Hiya, you okay? Okay, sorry, oh my throat just went dry then. The Sue Ralph here, so I'm hoping to do a craft along with me. So if Matthew, uh, sorry, Martin, ask my son's name, Matthew, just sort of hands down to the front here. I just wanted to show you, um, Louise has a uh, mindful art journey, so it's the Ragtime Journals again, on the 25th of March. Okay, this is the sort of thing that we did before. Whoops, sorry, too long to... Um, so I just wanted to sort of quickly show you this, and then I'm going to take one of the, the new journals I've been sent to make samples. Okay, and I'm going to start a new page in here with you. So the main focus of this Facebook Live is to try and do a background, um, do a little bit of stamping, and then it's up to you then to go away and finish your page. And what would be brilliant is if you were to actually upload them onto the I Love Indigo Blue page, and you can share them with me, um, well, and the rest of the members, which would be great. So, ready? Do you want to uh, get yourself ready and set, Martin? Yeah, yeah, sure. Alison and uh, Joe have just joined us. Hi, is this the Alison that said to me about the heat gun? Well, it's Alison Horn and Alison Markham. I think it was Alison Horn, if I remember. And I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I think I might have forgotten to have that. Okay, so I'm going to start a new page in my journal. Let's just open it. Now, this is the Ragtime Journals, and uh, they're really lovely thick paper, and they can take any medium that you throw at them. And the other good thing about it is it doesn't bleed through, which is absolutely brilliant. And the paper becomes stiffer once you've actually put your paints and your mediums um, onto them. So, you know, it's, it's a great uh, booklet to work in and you can keep adding to these as Lou will show you on the 25th. I'm not going to say too much, but there are some new products come in to go with this one. Okay, so for, day, for today... I'm going to use, as I say, one of the pages. If you don't have a journal or if you have, um, uh, if you don't have these, but you have a different journal, that's fine. Uh, you could just use a piece of card if you want to craft along. That's not a problem at all. Now, I thought instead of using texture pastes and um, embossed and that sort of thing, what we could do is we could use up some old scraps of paper again and we could make a background and then we could start layering up on, on our stamps. So, um, I used this paper a little while ago. This is the uh, old indigo blue paper, which I've still got some sheets of. So the idea is to use any little scraps that you've got. And as you can see, I've actually created an edge because that makes good texture when you're putting it onto your journal. Um, and you can pick up these edges when you start to put some inks or paints on top. So the idea is you want to get this white edge because that gives you sort of more of a crinkled look. So you just grab a piece of your paper. Now, there's two ways of doing it. If you pull towards you, you get that white edge. Can you see? But then of course on that piece you don't. So you need to go back in and you need to just pull that edge again. Okay, so you can have either short pieces. I mean, you could always use this as well, this little piece. But I'm gonna put them to one side for now. And I'm gonna continue around creating myself some white edges. While you're doing that, Tracy says, I'm, I'm here, not sure if I'm ready. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> good that you joined us though. Ellen Moller van der Heer says, cute size. Yes, it's a really nice size to work in actually, because it's not too big, so you don't feel overwhelmed by it. Okay, so I'm just going to randomly rip these up. You don't need to be precise. You just need to get get some pieces. As I said, I want to try and have as many of these white edges as I can. Okay. Now, the other thing uh, with journals, which I know a lot of people have been doing, which is a, it's a good idea, actually, is if you're feeling a little bit down, if you're not happy with things, um, you don't really have anybody to voice it to, why not get your journal? Write anything you want down on your journal, get it out of your head and get it onto paper. And then with this, you're covering it all so no one's ever going to see what you've written. 
so it's just a little tip for you if you just need to get something off your chest. Right, so. Helen Hopkins says hi, Sue. Hi, and Helen. Janet Burgess says hi. And Rizwana Farouk Hassan says hello, Sue. Hiya, thanks for joining me, everybody. Now, Helen is brilliant at doing journals. Um, H. Uh, so I'm hoping <laughs> that uh, she's going to like this idea. I'm sure she's done something like this anyway before. And I don't know if any of the other ladies from the uh, Indigo Blue Bluebirds, Indigo Blue Bird, Bluebirds are watching. Um, I just wanted to say a big welcome to Tamara Morton. She's just joined yesterday. So for the Bluebirds now, we have now Tamara. We have Carolyn Lakin. Emma Blake, H, Julie Atkinson, myself, obviously, and Kay, and Lou, Louise. Um, so we've got quite a good team, and we're all very busy at the moment trying to get our samples done for Lou's show, which, as I said, is on the 25th of March, and it's 11 and 3 p.m. Right, so now we've got some little bits and pieces. What we just need to do is, I've got to slap it on, but if you don't have slap it on, uh, you can always use PVA glue or something. But I find this really good. So I'm just literally. Can I, while you're just doing that, I must comment on this one. Um, Carol Lopez Lesueur has said someone has remembered their glasses today. <laughs> In other words, me. <laughs> oh, nice Fair one. <laughs> nice one, yeah. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. So with the slap it on, it's best to slap it on, of course. Um, so I put some on my page first. I don't do all over because this will dry, this will uh, sort of take it and um, sink in. So I just do patches. Then go on the back of your piece of paper. Okay. And then pop it on. And you don't need to be precise. I just want to make sure I'm not going over that edge. I mean, some people like to do, you know, open up their album and do the entire lot. I tend to work at one page at a time because I find that's easier for me. But it's entirely up to you. Some people like to do the whole thing, do a background. But as I said, it's, it's you know, what works for you. There's no right or wrong way of doing any of this. It's just whatever you enjoy doing. So I'm going to pop some along here. Right. Sue was saying that she was um, concerned that uh, a lot of you, know, you watchers, you viewers, might be at the craft show today um, up in Birmingham at the NEC. Um, Sue and I went there yesterday. Yeah, we had a, a good nosy around. Um, I did think, um, I'm not sure if anybody else thought the same, it might just be me, but I didn't think there were quite so many stands there this year for crafters. Um, I thought there were an awful lot for people who do sewing. Uh, there was felting, big machines. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has been over the last day, what, what they thought. But yeah, I just didn't think there were so many craft craft shops there. But of course, I got to see the lovely Lou, which was um, a nice surprise. I haven't seen Lou in quite a while, actually, so it was nice to catch up with her. And of course, she's there again today. And she's on the clarity stand this time. Okay. So a few of you, um, I don't know if there's any of them watching today, but you went on um, the retreat at Retford last weekend. And by all accounts, everybody had a lovely time. Although I know Lou had to go home early because she wasn't very well. But there is one next weekend in Manchester. Now, there were a couple of spaces going free because um, a couple of people had to cancel. So and I think we had one lady this morning who was interested, but I don't know if anybody else, you know, is itching to do a retreat and they're up in that neck of the woods. I think there might be some sort of place going if anybody's interested. Right, and Lou will be doing that one with Kay. So hopefully she'll feel a lot better. And that woman's going to meet herself coming backwards soon. There you go. Right. So you keep um, just layering your paper up. 
And as I said, what we're trying to create is a little bit of texture in the background here. Can I just say, Rizwano said, where is the retreat? Is that, did you say is that's the one in Manchester you're talking um, about? The Dirty Weekend is in Manchester. Um, the retreat was in Retford, which is close to Nottingham. Okay. There's another one, I think, in October, the retreat. I think I'm right in saying that. And Jennifer Thompson says, I found the same at Glass that go uh, last weekend. Uh, very few of what I would call craft stores. Oh. So it's obviously um, something that's just happening. I don't know why. Is it to do with the internet or is it to do with, you know, the craft channels? I don't, I don't know. To be honest, there's so much going on with these channels that I... I switch off a little bit because I think there's a lot of backstabbing going on, which is unnecessary. But anyway, I'm not going to get onto that. So <laughs> let's concentrate on our lovely indigo blue products. So I hope everybody can see what I've done there. So I've just laid down some paper and it doesn't matter what colour it is, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with the, uh, the white G So Good. Uh, if you just got gesso, that's absolutely fine. It's the same thing. It's just... Kay calls it G so good. And sorry, then, I must mention this, sorry to interrupt again, that uh, Rizwan has just said, whereabouts in Manchester, right? Because uh, she said, I'm in Manchester. Can you tell me where I can get more info, please? Well, I presume you'll contact her too. I can contact you and send you a link, but if you go on to the Indigo Blue website, and um, when you go on to it, it pops up. There's like different slideshows that go across um, the main indigo blue website and you all you can click on workshops and then you'll find a link to manchester but what i can do after i've done this i will send you the link if you're having problems finding it okay so what i've done now is i've literally just put a coat of the white juice so good down and that is just to knock those colors back a little bit okay so this is where i'm going to get the heat gun out a little bit just to dry this off before I put some paint on it. Now is a good time if anybody needs to go and grab anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sort of thing I would normally do. I'd be running off now. Right, I have got three different shades of blues and purples. Um, so I've got the Park Lane. This is a new one. This is a translucent one. This is um, the Duck Egg. It's a lovely colour. And then this one is Grandma's Teacup. And I'm just going to use those just to put some colour in the background. Because the main focus is going to be this stamp that H has actually designed. And that's going to be on the show with Lou. And this one is Luna and the Owl. Okay. And what I've done just to save some time, because this paper is quite fibrous, I find it better if I want to do a, a nice crisp image to use my uh, stamping platform. So what I've already done is I've stamped mine out. But as I said, the main focus of this is the background. Um, and, you know, obviously you can then carry on and do your stamping afterwards. Right. I think that's going to be dry enough for me to paint on now. Let me just move those. I'll just get my cloth. Give it a bit of a wipe. Now, I've got a little bit of sponge here, so I'm going to start putting down some colours. Now, I'm not going to be fussy and say I need three different colours, uh, three pieces of sponge. What I want to do is I just want to get a little bit of colour down. Okay, like so. And I'm just going to dip my sponge just into the background. Um, sorry, into the to lid, into the lid. So Helen says, I recognise that stamp, LOL. <laughs> yeah, they're lovely. Uh, H has done quite a few of these. So, um, and there's more to come. Ooh. So there we go, another little sneak peek of what's going on. Okay, so I'm just rubbing some colour across the page so you can see. Now I'm going to go into my duck egg, which you can see is a beautiful soft colour. So I'm not going to spread that out too much because I want that colour to show through a little bit more. Whoops. Like so.
Jacqueline Stevenson and Christine Bethany. Bethany. Beth Bethany. Bethany. Bethany is watching. Hiya. Hi, I ladies. Think there was a couple of others that came up, but they've just gone off the screen. I don't know how to scroll up, but uh, yeah. Yeah, Martin's always concerned that if he starts trying to scroll, scroll and mess things up, <laughs> he'll lose a picture. Right. So I'm just going to give that a quick blast just to set that. But you can probably start to see where you've got your edges, you've got a bit of texture going on now. Okay, now this is the time that you could actually come in with a stencil as well if you want to. If you've got some stencils, but I'm not going to um, do that just at the moment. Right, so that's quite nice, that's dry again. So I'm going to come back in with the duck egg. So I just want it a little bit more in the background here. I quite like this colour, although it's quite um, a thin, because uh, it's a transparent colour, it's quite a delicate colour. And then let's just get a little bit more of that blue in here again. This is a grandma's teacup. Okay. Right, just another quick dry. If you go over the side, don't worry, because whatever colour you're going to put on to this page, you can cover that a little bit. As I said, it's your journal. You do it as you like with it. You don't have to worry about being too precise. I mean, mixed media at the end of the day isn't about being too precise. It's about creating something that you like, and if it's messy, then that's fine. So I'm going to take the other side now, and I'm going to put on some of the uh, Park Lane, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm just going to wipe some off onto the mat. I'll move those out of the way a bit. Because what I want to do is not have too much on. I want to go across and try and pick up some of these lines where we've um, got the texture going on. Just to make them stand out a little. And if you find it's too much, you can just go back in with some um, of the paler paint just to knock it back a little bit. Sue Jacob has said, hi Sue, finally caught you live. Oh, hiya Sue, how you doing? Um, I know Sue, not, not personally, but she's in my card making group. So um, she's been with us for a while now. So we do have a chat every now and again. So it's nice to see you because I know um, Sue has started to get a lot more into mixed media. And she's been producing some lovely pieces because obviously I get to see them in, you know, when she does her cards. So it's nice to see you, Sue. There you go. Can you see where I've just touched the edges? Just to bring them up a little bit more. And as I said, if you find it's too dark, then you can just go back in with a lighter colour. April said, hi and four hearts. Oh, is that my April? Aww. So that's our little girl. That's my baby. I say baby because she's nearly 25. So, but she's still my baby. So I think there must be some little bit of arty, artiness in April because she's watched a few of these now. Right. So I've done that and that blue, because I've used so little, has actually virtually dried. So I'm just going to go back in with just a smidge of the um, duck egg. And I'm just gonna pat some over, just to break that uh, park lane down just a little. Is the park lane, is that to do with Monopoly and, and park lane, the um, blue, is it? No, it's just that Indigo Blue, Kay comes up with some quirky names, so. Of the Monopoly isn't park Yeah, park lane, lane is in there. It's isn't. just like grandma's teacup. And that's because that color reminded her of a teacup her grandmother mm. had. So, yeah, they just come up with some quite good quirky names, I think. There we go. So you can see, really, you can't see much of that paper pattern underneath. You can pick it up in certain points, but again, that just adds to the texture. It was a shame, actually, because one of the ladies earlier on said she really loved that, that colour pink. Oh, yes, which, it is. Which you can't see. No, you can't. Um, I think pretty sure that when Kay did all these colours uh, for the paper she actually used the colours that um, are in the paints and I can't remember 
off the top of my head which colour pink it was because I know we got marshmallow but that was too dark. I'll have to have a look and if I can find your comment I will put the colour of paint on there. Okay so we've got this far now so we've done our background let's put the paint back on the lids for a minute. Okay so now what I'm going to do is I want to put in Luna and the owl and I want to place her I don't always like doing things right and dead in the centre, but what I did when I was going through my stash of all little bits and pieces, I had actually done some of the, the laurel leaves um, well, a little while ago, and I actually embossed these, coloured coloured the paste and embossed them. I thought they'd be quite nice to be used with this as well. So I'm just going to gonna have to look this way round to me because I can't work upside down. I've tried, but it doesn't work very well. So I just want to put a few leaves here, but I don't want them to be growing out of her head or anything. <laughs> so let's just, because I think that would look a bit silly if I had them growing out of yeah, her head. Emma Blake says, hi there, I'm a bit late. Hi Sue and Martin. Hiya Emma, I hope you're sitting with your legs up. Remember Lou's warning yesterday. I hope you're feeling a bit better today and you know, things get on all right. There you go. So I'm going to think, put those there. Right, so I'm quite happy. I'm going to put those under there so that's creating another little bit of texture. Now, I've got to try and remember where I put, how I put those because what I want to do is I'm going to bring in, I've got a couple of stamps. Okay. Um, this is out of the editor's collection, or the collector's edition, I should say. I always keep saying it the wrong way around. The uh, collector's edition. So this one is the crackle, and then you've got the bumblebee. And I've, I've got the two little bees that I'm going to just put some in the background. Okay, so let's get... Um, I've got my distress inks here, some little ones. So I think I'm going to go with um, some salty ocean. And I'm not going to use a um, stamping block. I'm just going to put some ink on. I'm just going to add just a little bit of texture to the background again. Well, Helen has said, um, you need surgical stockings, Emma. Oh, um. <laughs> oh you'd love wearing those, I'm sure. But I think um, they're quite good for compression, aren't they? Nora Batty style, how about that? Well, I know, I was thinking, you know, surgical stockings. Hands. <laughs> Martin. Yeah, let's not go down that track. No, let's no. not. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, they're all going to be thinking that you're a strange person now. Well, no, <laughs> it's true. Right, so whilst I'm doing this, I will try and talk at the same time. Um, just to say that uh, on Lou's show, we have, as I said, we've got these lovely stamps here by H. But any of you that went to the retreat last weekend, you would have seen the new release stamps. Uh, so we've got um, a couple of new stamps coming out. And we've also got some new stencils, which are brilliant. There you go, I'll show you. That's all I'm showing you. <laughs> that one's from before, but those underneath there, there we go. <laughs> So Lou will be showing you those and as I said we've got more additions to these um, cotton rich journals. Right so I think I'm done with that there. Now let's just get out dark blue but I think what I'll do I'll stick these on first. Right so I'm gonna have to go back this way again. So I've got some glue and I'm just going to Sorry, if you heard that, it's a squeak, nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a squeak. My chair's squeaky if I move too much. Yeah. Right, so... Sounds good for the camera, though. <laughs> I think we all know the, the reality. No, 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 no. Right, Davina Simmons has said, Hi, just found you, new to crafting, so learning new things. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Which Glad. Is, which is good. Yeah, that's... that's um, what would I say, my philosophy or, but I, I love to craft and I, I love it even more if I can actually share some of the things that I've learned along my way, um, you know, with people. 
we all craft differently we all have different styles and that's not to say anything is right or wrong but i think what you just need to do sometimes is just have a little bit of inspiration from somebody and then you know you fly with it and then you find your own style and the, your own way of you know sort of doing things right so i said i didn't want it to go on yeah, the head I think I've got them in a different way, haven't I? I have to put it slightly over mm. this this way now. Okay, so what I'm just looking at there, where I'm faffing, is I want to put a couple of the, the little bumblebees in the background. So um, I think I'm going to use a uh, block for this, just so that that's if they stick to this block, just so that um, I can get a good little bit of uh, pressure. So let's see. Well, I'm just going to hold it there just for a minute so that the hopefully the ink will grab the paper and you get a better a better impression. Now I did want it in the background. That's why it's not um, popping up really dark. I could have used black if I wanted, but I do just want to sort of have them floating around the background. So let's have the other tiny one. And what you can always do is you can always go in and add just a little bit more colour on the wings. You know, you can use maybe one of the little sparkle pens or you could even go in with the um, sparkle flitter. Yeah, just zoom in, okay, so literally I'm just having just a few to sort of go around and frame. Okay. So I think I'm happy with the background and I might possibly go in, um, I think with maybe some dark ink or some of the paint and just frame that, I think. So let's see if I've got enough of the park lane on here. Yeah. So I'm just gonna create a little bit of a frame so your eye gets drawn into the middle of the page rather than sort of floating around. Caroline Craven says hello. Hello, hi Caroline. Hope you're all doing well. I know she's someone else who's a very busy lady. Um, you know, she's on um, Lou's design team and uh, she's doing an awful lot at the moment. I think I said Caroline and it's Caroline, Caroline isn't it? So yeah. I can see it now. Right. There we go. So this is the last bit. Just as I said, to frame it. Now, you can probably see these leaves are lifting up slightly and that's because it is very slightly still wet. Um, but when it dries, I can always stick it back down. There you go. Right, now what I'm going to do, put this to one side for a minute, and I'm going to bring in my stencils and I'm going to use the sea urchin okay and instead of coloring in Luna's hair I'm going to see if I can just use some of the stencil just to do her hair and then um, I haven't got everything here but basically I'm going to then color in her face and the owl and I'm going to pop this owl up on um, some 3d dimensionals okay so what I can do I'll finish this off and then you can have a look online afterwards so let's get um what color should we go for let's go for maybe a green i think so now of course i haven't bought a pair of scissors with me to cut this off have i let's just see if i can wipe some of the paint off it might be okay for me then to use the green well we can live in hope Right, so if it's multicoloured, it might look good, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a stencil and I'm just going to try and keep to the outlines of her hair. And then what I can always do, I can go back in with some paint if I've gone over. But I'll try and be careful. This is where post-it notes are really handy, actually. You know, so that you can um, mask it off a little bit. So... Just put some of this on. Actually, probably what would look nice is that if you had a colour underneath to start with and then you put um, the stenciling on. 
Right. Whoops. So I'm trying not to um, go over where I've stamped. I mean, you might find it easier with a little brush, you know, to do some stippling. But I'm sure you all find a way, you know, that you find it easier for you. Yes, one side. Let's do the other side of the head. Okay. Helen Hopkins says, I love the stencil. Oh, this one's pretty actually. This one is a uh, sea urchin, which um, came out on the um, K show, on her last show that she did. I do like it though. Because it's quite a simple pattern, but it's actually has a lot of pattern within it, if you see what I mean, if that makes sense. Right, so let's just put a little bit more down there. Now, what... Gillian Williams has just joined us. Hi, Gillian. Right, so I'm just thinking that we possibly need a little bit more colour in there. Can you see what I've done there? Actually, if you go over the owl, it doesn't matter because we're going to be popping an owl in. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with another colour. I think I might come in with the purple again. And just see if we can just go sort of slightly down, maybe just to create a bit more colour. I'm hoping that this isn't going to turn... Oops, so I'm going to have to wipe this off again. Um, it's not going to turn to brown. I think sometimes purple and green can make a sort of a browny colour, so let's, let's hope. Right. And this is quite a strong colour, so I'm going to wipe some off a little bit. And then let's just see. So what can be done here? Yeah, just sort of highlights it a little bit more. So I'm not going to be quite so careful. I can go over the owl slightly this time because I'm going to be sticking my other owl over the top. There you go. Just try and make sure I don't go onto her face. Make it look like she's got tattoos or something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what I ought to do on her arms. Give us some tats. Right. Let's have a look. There we go. I think it's more or less done. If I put the owl there, you're not going to see where I've gone over slightly. And then obviously I can just go in a little bit here where the underside of her hair is. Let's just put a little bit more purple at the top. Just try and balance things out a little bit more. Oops. Let's see if I dare go in very carefully here. And then this side. There you go, I'm quite happy with that. Now, as I said, I haven't got all the colours now to colour in the owl and Luna's face. I would probably use the porcelain paint and a little bit of the rouge just to give her some colours on her cheeks and her lips. And then I will do something um, with the owl, probably some browns and maybe even some golds. And then, back to the background, okay, and then pop her there, whoops, like so. And then you can use some sentiments, and I actually got one out of the um, stitched squares, which I thought um, is quite a nice sentiment, and it's called Whispers of the Heart. So what I will do is I'll probably 
well, I'll show you now, because stamp it out onto some card. And I'm going to stamp it on card, and the reason being, um, because it's very small text, I'm not sure if it will actually show up, because this is a little bit more textured. So, get some black ink. And it doesn't matter if it's upside down or not at the moment. Stamp it out. And then what I'll do is I'll colour colour the background in slightly using some of the paint, just so it's not quite so white. Cut it out, put a line around it, and then what I shall do is I shall place it up here. I think that's quite nice whispers of the heart to go along with Luna and the owl. Um, and with the owl, once I finish colouring, I'm going to get myself some dimensionals. I'll put some dimensionals on the back just to make the owl a little bit more 3D. So I think we'll leave it there because I know I've had a few comments from people saying that the videos are too long. So I'm hoping that you've enjoyed that and you've set up a background if you've been joining in with me. Um, and if you have, I would love to see what you've been making. Um, if you put them up onto the I Love Indigo Blue, that would be smashing. So again, thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I'll come back and do something more on Wednesday. So see you then. Bye, Bye for now, peeps.